Hey everybody, Jeremy Goodrich from Shine Insurance here, and this video is about how to start an insurance agency with no money. I've created other videos on the basics of how to create an insurance agency. You should definitely check those out as a part of your research to decide if this is something that you really want to do. But what if you don't have any money? You don't have any cash stashed away. This video is going to help you figure out how to do it with a limited amount of cash and be able to succeed. So let's dig right in. What will we cover? Well, first, we're going to start start with the basics, the things we need to understand to be able to succeed. Uh, the second looks like we skipped the second there. There we go. The business plan. This is the key. It's so important if you don't have other resources to be able to sell yourself and the value of the plan that you bring. I'll show you how to do that. Number three is company access. It's the key to success. You have to have a product to be able to have an insurance agency and company access is the way to have that process product. Client access, obviously you need someone to sell that product too. And then delivery systems, key systems that will make it scalable for you to grow and how to do that in a really inexpensive way. And then at the very end, I have a bonus here. Um, I'm gonna show you some actual numbers from our agency in the first few years and show you the exact formula that we used to be able to put together an agency from scratch without any money at all, which is exactly what we did. So let's dig right into the basics. Look, we've gotta understand the basics here. We are, we are selling a product to a client. We are selling an insurance policy to a policy holder. If we can't pull off that, having a policy in someone's hand so that it can protect them when bad things Things happen to their business or their home or their cars or whatever it is that they're needing protection for, then we are not going to be able to succeed. So we have to understand that basic premise and never forget that, right? And the way the structure generally works is that the policy comes from an insurance company and the policy holder does not go directly to the insurance company because they're not really sure what they need. That's the problem with all these Super Bowl commercials is that they really get it wrong. You know, this Liberty Mutual thing right now, you only pay for what you need. It's the most ridiculous marketing campaign ever. No one knows what they need. What kind of insurance, what kind of bad thing's gonna happen to you, right? Is it gonna, is it gonna be a car accident? Is a tree limb gonna fall on your car? Are you gonna hit a deer? Is there gonna be a fire in your car? Like if you, if you know what you need, then it just doesn't make any sense, right? That doesn't make any sense. So anyway, um, we, we need to be able to connect as retail agents, which is what you want to be, a retail agent, right? You need to be able to connect a policy to a policy holder through an insurance company, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's dig into your business plan to figure out exactly how you're going to get that insurance company, that first insurance company, to say yes to your business plan. So what are the parts of your business plan? Well, number one is what makes you different from other agencies? We'll dig into that. How will you attract ideal clients. Every insurance company has an idea of what they want from ideal clients. They don't always get that, but they want you to pitch that to them when you're talking to them. And so you have to be able to explain that. What is your growth plan? How are you going to grow? How are you going to grow as an agency? How are you going to grow with that company? I'll talk about that in a second. And how will you keep your book of business profitable? We have to understand that insurance is a business and insurance companies want to ultimately make money. The quality insurance companies also want to pay out claims in a just way that takes great care of people and makes them whole again when bad things happen. But in the end, after they pay those millions and millions and even billions of dollars in claims, they want to have more premium coming in than they have claims going out, meaning they made money. And so you need to be able to talk that language with them so that they know that you understand that profitability is important. So let's dig into each of those. What makes you different? There's a few things that you can do to make sure you are showing that right from the start. First, Make your personality front and center. Who are you? What's your story? What's your history? And then what's your experience? If you have experience in insurance, if you're starting an insurance agency and you've never sold insurance ever before, you're taking a big leap there and you're really going to have to sell experience, maybe the experience with the group of people you want to sell to, right? If you are uh, were a professional athlete and now you're starting an insurance agency and you're going to do high-end personal insurance for professional athletes, okay, I can start to connect with you on that uh, as an insurance company and say, okay, I get it. Um, even though he doesn't have experience in insurance, he has experience with these people and so that that should work out. So, so personality and experience. Research and analysis. You have to know what it is you're gonna do, 
why you think it's going to be successful and present that to insurance companies when you're saying, I'm going to be the one to be able to make you succeed. Look, I have studied this group of people. I have studied this uh, and I know how we're going to have success. And also, I think you always have to be serving the greater good. Maybe this is just a core thing for me, but I think it really is something you can present all the time. If you have a program from the very beginning that says, here is how we're going to give a percentage of our profits to other folks who maybe are less fortunate than ourselves. Here we get, here's how we're going to prop up our communi- community. Here's where, how we're going to rise by lifting others. I think that's a really smart way to structure your business as a whole. I think it's a really smart way to live life and live life to the fullest. And I think it's a great way to connect with insurance companies and show them that there's more to you than just making money. So those are some of the things that can make you different. How will you attract ideal clients? You have to know who your clear ideal client avatar is is. There are lots of things online. If you look up ideal client avatar, you can really study. You want to know this person inside and out. You want to understand who this person is so you can talk about this person and you know how to attract them. You have to have a clear approach to serving that person. How are you going to serve that person? It doesn't have to necessarily just be about insurance. You know, when I was deciding that the first time home buyers were my ideal client avatar, I started teaching first time home buyers how to buy a house. That has nothing to do with insurance. I was just trying to help those folks and that converted then into them seeing me as someone who when they needed insurance was the person that they wanted to come come to. I think you also have to understand the concept of inbound versus outbound strategies and articulate this when you're talking to insurance companies. Inbound means you're doing good things out in the world and then you're getting like referrals or attraction. You're sort of a thought leader to people and they They come to you. An outbound strategy is cold calling or, you know, constantly going out and just trying to find people, find people, find people. Inbound strategies have much higher close ratios and they tend to be higher quality clients that you work with. Outbound strategies have much lower close ratios and they tend to be lower quality clients that you work with. So you want to pick up an inbound strategy and be able to share that with insurance companies when you're talking to them in your business plan and uh, be able to put that into practice. What is your growth plan? I think this is so key. You have to come to some of these meetings ready for this. What are specific financial targets for your agency? What are specific financial targets for that company. Even if this is the first company you're getting appointed with, you need to present yourself as if you have multiple companies because you will. That company will not be all the business that, you know, will not get all the business that you have coming into your agency. And they shouldn't feel like that. That's going to feel desperate and feel like they're the only one even thinking about working with you, right? You were going to say, here are my targets for my agency. I believe you can probably pick up 40 to 50% of that if you're really performing well, your prices are good for quality coverage. Um, you know, that means I could do this amount of business with you, right? Figure that out. What are your specific team member targets? When do you want to have your first employee? When do you want to have your 10th employee? When do you want to have your 60th employee? That's probably too far right now. Just think a few years out, you know, but what what are those team members? When are they coming in and how are you going to grow? That's really important. And again, what are your specific giving targets? Back to that rise by lifting others. If we're talking about the targets that we have for giving, that is a key part of our business plan and our strategy for success. How will you keep it profitable? So we start with what we call frontline underwriting. Insurance companies want to know that when you're talking with a potential client, you have your eyes open for higher risk individuals, for higher risk properties, for higher risk businesses. Are you driving by? There are certainly some insurance agents who drive by every single uh, home before they offer a proposal on it. Um, How are you asking questions of clients? At Shine, we have our online form that no matter whether they call or they go online, everybody has to go through the online form. That means every single time they're answering the same exact question. And we know that we have consistency in our frontline underwriting. Then we have a process on the back end where we have our VA team and our producers and everyone else go through that process to underwrite the risk or the property or whatever it is, the business, 
um, before even looking for quotes. We're showing our companies that we do frontline underwriting, and that means we have a higher likelihood of being profitable. Clear standards of coverage. We will not go below certain liability limits for personal auto right? 100, 300, 100 is the lowest we'll go in split limits uh, states that are at fault states. Um, and we won't go any lower. There's, you know, depending on the state, the, the state limits uh, required are significantly lower than that. Why won't we do that? Because we have clear standards of coverage. We don't believe it's safe to go any lower than that. And so we're not going to go any lower than that. And I think insurance companies like to see that. See that. And then finally, what is your willingness to say no. How are you going to make sure that you're attracting your ideal clients and not others? If you're not repelling anyone, then your business plan is not strong enough. Who are you repelling and how are you going to say no to them? So let's talk about that company access. How are you going to get that? You've got your business plan. You're all set up. You've got things going. Notice you haven't spent any money yet. You've spent some time, but no money spent, which is great. Now we have to be able to get what's called an appointment. An appointment is the terms of agreement between you and the company or broker, right? This is what you're looking for. You're looking to get appointed with at least one insurance company. You can't start selling insurance until you have at least one appointment. Ultimately, you want to have lots of appointments. You want to have multiple insurance companies that you're appointed with. And you'll get there. We're uh, Shine, we're appointed with, I don't even know, probably 20, 30 direct appointments. And then we have wholesalers and brokers. We have access to hundreds of insurance companies. We've built that over time. So you have to get that appointment. Remember, uh, when you're having a direct relation, so there, there are two ways to do this, right? One is direct. You, the retail agent, are going to go to the insurance company. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. You're going to go to the insurance company and say, I would like to be appointed with you. That is one way of doing it. That's the most direct way. Um, that's the way lots of folks do it. There's one other way, and that's through an aggregator. And don't get this confused with a wholesaler or broker. Uh, there is another video you can watch. I'll put a link to it right in the top here uh, about all the different ways to access insurance companies. I'm keeping it very limited here. But this is going to an aggregator and saying, you know, hey, can you help me connect with insurance companies? And you can generally get a better connection with more insurance companies more quickly if you go through an aggregator, but they take a cut of the commission. The person you're looking for at the insurance company to get this employment is generally called the regional market representative. Do that search in LinkedIn and just start looking. And if you know what company you want to get appointed for with, um, do that search in LinkedIn with that company name. See who that person is. This is how you're going to research the person who is the decision maker about company appointments for that company. You're going to reach out to them, whether it's through LinkedIn or whether it's through email, whether it's through a phone call. And you're going to say, look, um, I'm a new insurance agency owner. I'm really wanting to establish some great company relationships. I'm wondering if we could get together over Zoom or coffee to talk about my business business plan and how I think that I can benefit your company in a huge way in the area that you're in, right? That's the pitch you're going to try and connect with. Um, yeah, a local employee of the insurance company tasked with appointing new agencies. Okay. So also, do you already have any connections? Who can make that intro? Who can vouch for you? One of our first companies was West Bend Mutual Insurance, a company that we still love to this day. Uh, they're one of our best companies. And we had connections. We knew people inside when we started. And so we directly went to them, a company that doesn't generally appoint uh, start from scratch agencies until they're a little more established. And because of our connections, we were able to get that appointment and that really got us going quickly. Where do you have connections? What connections can you use to get appointment appointed? If you don't have any, reach out to us, see if we can help you out in some way. In the meeting that you have with the regional company rep, listen more than you talk. This is just basic sales strategy, right? You're selling yourself, your insurance agency to the company in this meeting. And you want to listen. And what you're listening for is the things that are important to them. You want to listen more than you talk. You want to make those connections and make them feel like you truly want to understand their insurance company, what they're all about, what they're looking for, right? You have to know your business plan inside and out. Because when you do start talking, you need to kind of adjust your business plan to what you're hearing. Where in your business plan 
Is it connected with the thing that that company rep is talking about themselves needing? Maybe it's not necessarily adjusting your business plan. It's just knowing what part of your business plan to highlight, right? If they are looking for a younger generation of clients, they're concerned that their client base is getting older and older, then you need to talk about your marketing strategy that's more digital, that's more hands, you know, that's more texting and things like that. You want to talk about the things that are going to connect with the, what they're looking for, right? That's just basic sales strategy, and that's what you need to be applying when you're in these meetings and ultimately be yourself. Don't pretend to be something you're not because if you do get this appointment, you're going to have a relationship with this person for a long time. And if they see you are one way at the beginning and then you're different afterwards, that relationship is going to sour really quickly. All right. So um, how about clients? We've got our company access. We got appointed. We That regional sales rep said, okay, we're going to appoint you. We've got some companies. How do you find your ideal, uh, your, your clients? Well, you have to study your ideal client avatar, right? You have to name that person. You have to understand their wants and needs. You have to understand their biggest problem with insurance. You have to understand their key fears and indicators of success. You really need to study this person because when you're creating marketing materials, when you're talking in a sales conversation, all the things that you're doing, all the language that you use, if it speaks specifically to your ideal client, it is going to attract more of those people. And that is what you're looking for. Serve that person in any way you can. Again, Matt, back to my example of first time home buyers and teaching them how to buy a home. Had nothing to do with insurance, right? I was just trying to figure out how to make their life easier. And so I created a vi video series that taught them how to buy a home. How can you align with their goals and interests? Look, if your ideal client is a, you know, a college professor in your town, are you going to events that are connected with that college? Are you tailgating? at the football games? Are you going to the ballet? Are you out there in connection with those individuals? That's great ways to do it, right? Um, how can you guide them in some way, right? This may connect more with the insurance piece, right? I'm going to help you with your risk management. I'm going to help you make sure that your winter, your house is winterized, you know, in, in November before winter comes around. Whatever it is, how can you kind of guide them through their journey? How can you bring them together with other ideal clients? avatars. This is such a great way to do things. If you can be the person who has the meetup, who has the party, who has the event, who speaks at the fundraiser, you suddenly are becoming more of the person bringing your ideal client avatar together. This is where your marketing strategy is really going to sing. All right. And then finally, you're going to offer simple, smart solutions. When they are ready for insurance, make it simple. Make sure your process is simple, as simple as possible. Make sure you're clear every single way. Make sure you under promise and over deliver. Offer quality coverage and don't skimp on it. It's great if you have a better price. Obviously, price matters, especially in insurance. Um, but don't skimp on the coverage. Don't be afraid to be a little bit more expensive because their current policy is missing some major things that are going to be really bad for them. Be a little bit more expensive. Explain why you're a little bit more expensive. It's not because I'm actually more expensive. It's because I want you covered correctly. That's super important. And wow them every step of the way. Under promise, over deliver. That's exactly what you need to be doing. And then at the end, ask them to share with friends, right? When you really get things snowballing is when you have the opportunity to get referrals from uh, your own clients, and then that really starts to snow, snow, uh, uh, be a snowball. What's my metaphor there? Anyway, you know what I'm saying. Finally, you need delivery systems, right? You have to be able to make your process work. You sold someone, you got the company, you got the client, you sold the business. Now you have to make sure that your process is all set up. And so what I say to everyone I talk to who is a new agency owner, document your process, document your process, document your process. Start to create your, uh, your SOPs, your standard, standard operating procedure. What happens first, then second, then third, then fourth, every single time you quote insurance for someone, you have to start to establish that standard operating procedure, right? Document every single step, build out the SOPs and build your workflows. Think about scalability from the beginning, because if you're a year in and you're starting to get overwhelmed and you're wanting to hire someone and you don't have this process set up, you're already too busy to do it. The place to do it is at the beginning when you're really getting things started. 
Now, I do want to tell you that you can use our workflows. Uh, if you want to use the Shineway workflows, you can actually absolutely get those from us. Uh, get the delivery workflows we've built over the last 10 years. We've packaged that, and um, it doesn't come with no money. So uh, as far as starting with from scratch with no money, you may have to save up a little bit to get our workflows. You can certainly build your own workflows, but this will jumpstart your workflow process by getting all of our standard operating procedures uh, from us, and that's at shineinsurance.com slash workflows. All right, so let's dig into some actual numbers, our bonus. Let's see how I did it. So my trajectory was really simple. Um, from the very beginning, my goal was no less than $20,000 of written premium per month. No matter what, I wanted to do at least $20,000 of written premium per month. And I achieved that goal almost every month from the beginning until the goals were, were much higher. Um, if I could do that in the first year, that would mean over 12 months, I would make $240,000 of written premium. That's the money that goes to the insurance company. In general, we make about 13%. 13.5% is the average amount of commission an independent insurance ag agency owner makes. And so um, that would add up to $32,000 of annual revenue. Now think about that just for a second, because this is how hard it is at first. You work really, really hard all year long, and your agency gets $32,000 of annual revenue. And that is before expenses. That's before your marketing expenses. That's before your rent. That's before a lot of things. That is not a lot of money. And so you may want to say, hey, well, I'm going to set my goals a lot higher, right? Well, we were just trying to get by. We'd saved up a little bit of money. So we, we knew it was going to take a couple years to get things going. Um, so the first year, really not a lot of revenue going on there. But let's see what happens, right? So year two, we raise that a little bit. We say, all right, let's make sure that we average at least $30,000 of written premium. That's $360,000 of written premium a year. That is $48K annual revenue from new business in year two. But remember, the great thing about insurance is that we have reoccurring revenue. If people don't leave in year two, you generally make the same amount of money as an agency owner right? Oftentimes, if you're a salesperson, a producer, a commission producer, you don't make as much money off of renewals as you do off of new business. But the agency itself generally depends on the insurance company, but generally makes at least a similar number, if not the same, of commission. So if we figure that same amount of commission, then now we've got 32K in the renewals and 48K in the new business. So now we've got $80,000 of annual revenue total. Now we're starting to have enough money that even with our expenses, we can start to pay ourselves something. Now, let's say our expenses are only $40,000, which I think is very doable in year two, probably less than that. You could probably make your expenses $20,000 in year two and still get by and make $60,000 yourself. It's really how much do you want to put back into the business. Depends on your life, your situation, what you can or can't do. That's about where we landed in year two. And then year three, it really starts to compound. So you do the same thing, right? You've got 48K here, but you got 80K annual revenue from renewals, right? Now we're talking about $128,000 of annual revenue revenue total. Now we're getting to a place where we can start considering hiring people and really start to snowball. And eventually, as we are get like we are getting there, you get to a million dollars of annual revenue, right? Our goal has always been to not have a bunch of debt. There's lots of agencies out there who get to a million dollars of av annual revenue in three years or four years. That's because they take on debt, they buy other agencies, they take big risks from the start, and that's totally fine. That's just not how we did it. We wanted to start an insurance agency with no money, and that's exactly what we did. So there you have it. Um, that is the end of the video, how to start an insurance agency with no money. It is not an easy thing to do. One question I think you should have for yourself is, do you want to do this, right? Um, there's another avenue, which would be to become a producer for an agency. Go to an agency and use their insurance company connections and work for them and make commission off of them. That's a perfectly viable solution. We have lots of great producers at Shine Insurance who are doing exactly that, so that would be another solution. All right, well, if you haven't watched the How to Start an Insurance Agency video. I would encourage you to do that. It's very different. Also, how to access insurance companies, another video that we have as well. Awesome. Well, it's been a pleasure teaching you how to do this. Please, in the comments below, let me know what you learned from this video, what I left out, what else you would like to understand. More than happy to create some video for, videos for you. Until the next time, have a wonderful day.